This will be a short tutorial on how to graph spectral data. The information that we're showing here is from an Excel sheet, and the student that did these experiments did essentially what you did in the laboratory, took absorbance readings at a number of different wavelengths from 375 to about 750, and analyzed about six different solutions. Now these are slightly different than the ones that you had in the laboratory, but the, we're going to handle the data the same way. And we've put all the individual absorbance readings in columns B through G. So for example, the purple solution number 1 at 375 gives us an absorbance of 0 0.196, and at 700 gives us an absorbance of 0 0.02. So how do we actually graph these data then? We're going to look at that next. And again, this is in Excel, but you can do this in any almost any other spreadsheet type of program. To do one graph, I don't want to look at all of these different solutions at the same time. So in this case, I have highlighted column A because we want that to be present as our x-axis in all cases. And I've also highlighted in this case solution F. So they're shown in blue. On a Mac, I did that holding the command key down while I selected column A and column F. And then I can go immediately to my next uh, screen on, on Excel. And in this case, I want to highlight charts. So we're going to pick charts up here. And when we pick the charts, we get a number of options, including um, if we wanted to do a column or a line, but we're actually going to pick the scatter, so that's shown here. And if you select that, you get a number of options within the scatter plot, and what we want, and I've highlighted here, we want the smooth marked scatter. You could do other options, but I actually want to see the line showing the complete spectrum when I'm done. Now when we release that, we're going to get a graph. Here's the graph that we get from Excel. And one of the first things I want you to notice is that Excel automatically sets this axis to zero. And we really started at 375, so we're going to want to change that. And the first thing that we're going to do is actually select on that, on these numbers, and we will get a screen that looks like this, uh, Format Axis. When we have those options, we can see a number of things. One is that the minimum up here is set to zero, and we want to change that. So we're going to go in and modify that, and we're going to enter 375 because that's where we want our graph to start. While we're here, I want to point out a number of things. You can um, change the number of ticks that are on your line. You can change what we're on the um, parts of the scale. We can change the line itself, add shadows, glows, etc. And you can also change the major and minor units, but we're not going to mess with that right now. Now when we do that, we get a graph that looks much more like what we want for a spectrum. And you can see that now we're starting at 375 and it goes to 775, a little bit higher. You could cut it off at 750 if you want, but we start to see the data the way that we want to look at them. Now we want to do a few other things. We want to add legends. So we're going to do that next. Our next goal is to make axis titles for our graph. So again, here's my graph with in the Excel format. And if you look up at the top, I've got charts and it's highlighted. And we see that there are options within the chart menu for chart layout and format. We're going to look at the chart layout next. When I select the chart layout, you'll see that a number of new options pop up underneath. 
including chart title, axis titles, data labels, etc. And we're going to focus right now on axis titles. Notice that there's a little caret off to the side, and when you select that, you'll see that a couple of options, horizontal axis title and vertical axis title, appear. You can further expand these. We're going to select the vertical axis title. And now we see that we have the options of uh, a rotated title, a vertical title, or a horizontal title. There are other options. And what we're going to work on right now is a rotated title. So when we select that, we're going to automatically be given a box on the side of our graph for a rotated title. And that's going to be our next option. Having selected that, we can now type in the words absorbance units or whatever you need to add to your, to your figure. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing for the horizontal axis to give a legend there. And what I typically find that is I need to do is actually take pick the graph itself and slide it up a little bit so that you have more room down here. And then we can add our horizontal legend wavelength nanometers in this case so that we clearly have both the x and the y axis labeled for this graph. And finally, not necessary, but there are other options that you can choose. You can decide to change the color of the line, and in this case, we simply selected the line in the legend. Um, you could also select the line here, and you will get a menu that says format, format legend entry, and you can pick line and change it to whatever, whatever color you want. And you can even change the transparency if you want. Um, the same is true if you decide you want to change the markers. The markers are um, the actual data points that show what you had in your graph. The line that connects them is added, of course, by the program. In this case, I selected the actual marker, and we get the option again, and I get marker fill. I can change the marker line or the marker style. And in this case, I changed it to black, and I hit OK, and it changes it on my graph. Here's my final graph of solution 5. I went back and I changed some of the lines around each of the symbols and I changed the line color so that it would be a little bit cleaner looking. I made the lettering um, bold. In all cases the letters and numbers bold so that it would be real easy to see this graph. You can also do other things like remove these lines if you don't like those, but I think in an absorbance it's pretty useful because then it's easy to extrapolate to this point, for example, and get an estimate of what that exact absorbance reading was. And it ends up being um, 